Recently, I put out two Tesla-related videos, one about the resume that got me an engineering job and the other about my experience working there. They both did pretty well, so it only makes sense to make a video breaking down how to get an engineering job at Tesla and the hiring process. But before getting into it, how hard is it to actually get a job there? Well, in 2020, Tesla received over 500,000 applications just for 2,500 open positions. That means the chances of getting a job at Tesla is around 0.5%. To put things into perspective, the acceptance rate to MIT and Harvard in 2020 was 7.3% and 5% respectively. So it's harder to get into Tesla than the top colleges in the United States. Keep in mind, when you're applying to Tesla, you're also competing with current Tesla interns that are trying to turn their internships into full-time offers. You're also competing with people that have internal referrals, making the pool of candidates even bigger. The demand to work at Tesla is so high that recently, one engineering manager at Tesla said, I get 10 to 20 your requests per week on LinkedIn to connect and to help someone get a job and I'm now turning down 95% of the requests I get without even looking. That's brutal. At Tesla, there are three types of jobs that you can have. You can be an intern, a contractor, or a full-timer. As an intern, you obviously have to be enrolled in a university or college. You usually work at Tesla anywhere between 4 to 16 months. You're hired directly through Tesla and ideally after your internship, if you enjoyed it, you should try and convert it to a full-time role. Also, interns at Tesla usually don't get stock. Now, as a contractor, you're usually working at Tesla for a short period of time. It can be anywhere from four months to two years. You're not technically hired through Tesla. Instead, you're hired through a contracted company like Aerotech or Betts Recruiting. You usually get paid through them. Some contractors work at Tesla for a short period of time just to help them complete a certain project and then leave while other contractors try to take their contracting role at Tesla and convert that to a full-time role. Not all teams at Tesla hire contractors, but some do, and usually contractors don't get any Tesla stock. Finally, we have full-time engineers who are people that have graduated from university and work at Tesla indefinitely. They obviously get Tesla stock and are hired directly through Tesla. Now that we know the types of roles that Tesla offers, let's look at the application process and the interview process for each. Everything I'm about to mention may differ from team to team, but this is just a general pattern. For interns, you start off by applying on Tesla's website or through your university's job portal or through giving your resume to a recruiter at a career fair. If they like what they see on your resume, they'll start off by doing a 30 minute phone screen where a Tesla engineer will either call you on your phone or through a video call. In this interview, you'll probably get asked questions about your past projects, your resume, why you want to work at Tesla, and maybe even some technical questions. If that goes well, you get an email saying that they want to do another 30 minute interview with you. This interview will be conducted by a different engineer than the one that did the first interview with you. The questions in this interview will be a lot closer to the job description, or essentially they're going to ask you questions to make sure you have exactly what the job description is looking for. For example, if the job description requires a solid understanding of design for manufacturing, then they'll ask you questions to see how much experience you have with it. Afterwards, they'll probably end off with even more technical questions. Then after doing those two interviews, if they like you, they'll probably send you an email saying something like, your first two interviews went well, but could you write a few paragraphs for why you would be a good fit at Tesla and how you could contribute? Once you do that, they'll send your paragraphs to management for approval, and if that goes well, you get the offer. Now for contractors, you would apply on the contracted company's website, or you could message some of the recruiters from these contracted companies on LinkedIn or just send them an email. Recruiters from these contracted companies like Aerotech, Betts Recruiting, or DT Consulting are usually a lot more responsive than the Tesla recruiters. That's probably because they get some commission if they're able to hire you at Tesla. Once the recruiters from the contracting company have your resume, if they like it, they'll set up a time to call you for like 15 minutes or so just to ask you about why you're interested in the role and what kind of experience you have. It's not very technical at all. They really want to see if you're worth their time, but keep in mind that these recruiters from these contracted companies work on commission, so they want to do everything they can to help you get that job. The interview process for a contractor is similar to that of an intern. You'd usually do two or three interviews with two or three different engineers on the team. Expect detailed questions about your resume and a bunch of technical questions. If all three engineers like you, then you get the offer. Now, for full-time roles, you'd start off by applying either on Tesla's website or by getting an internal referral from someone that works at Tesla or by messaging or emailing a hiring manager or recruiter at Tesla your resume. If they like what they see, you then start the interview process at Tesla, which can be broken down into three main sections. First, you start off by doing a short 15 to 20 minute interview with a Tesla recruiter. They'll ask you questions about your resume, why you wanna work at Tesla, and it's not very technical at all. It's pretty simple to get past this stage as long as you have basic communication skills, 
Just realize you're not talking to an engineer on the other end, so don't just throw technical terms at them, unless they specifically ask for technical stuff. So if that goes well, you'd move on to the second stage, where you do two to three technical interviews, each interview with a different Tesla engineer. This happens over the span of two to three weeks. Here, expect technical questions and a bunch of detailed questions about your resume. If all three interviews go well, you then move on to the third stage, which is the panel interview. In this stage, you prepare a presentation and you must present it to a bunch of engineers. The presentation can be about a detailed project that you worked on in the past, but make sure you know every little detail about that project because they're gonna grill you on it like crazy. Finally, if that goes well, you get the offer. So as you can see, the interview process at Tesla for a full-time role is pretty long. So it is easier to get a contracting role or an internship role and then convert those into a full-time role. Now that you have a better idea of the application and interview process at Tesla, let's look at five things that you can do to help you stand out and eventually get a job there. The first tip is called social hacking where you leverage your social circle to help you get a job there. Sometimes just applying on Tesla's website isn't enough. So in order to social hack, you need to do one of two things. First, Tesla's always hosting career fairs in universities, so going to those and sharing your resume with a recruiter there can go a long way. If you have decent experience, a recruiter is more likely to choose you over someone who just applied on Tesla's website. Second, if there's anyone you know at all that works at Tesla or was interned there in the past, reach out to them and see if they can refer you because that will also go a long way. The second tip I have is to use LinkedIn way more than you already do. I genuinely think that if you really want a job at Tesla or any tech company for that matter, and you don't use LinkedIn, then you really don't want it. Not using LinkedIn for job hunting is like wanting to be in a relationship, but you're isolating yourself in your room, you're never going out, or you're never even using dating apps. So now that we know we need to use LinkedIn to stand out, here's what you need to do to increase your chances of a response when you message someone. First, in the search bar on LinkedIn, type in the engineering role you want to work as. Second, select people and filter by company and school. Choose Tesla and the university you're currently studying at or have graduated from. Third, a long list of people will show up. These are people that started off in a similar position to you and are where you want to be, so they're more likely to respond. Message them saying something like, hey, notice you also went to, insert university name, and are currently working at Tesla. I'd love to connect to learn more from your experience. Fourth, out of all the people you messaged, some will respond. Follow up by asking to have a quick call where you can ask them how they landed the job or if their team is hiring, etc. Make sure the conversation has a nice flow to it and it's not just you aggressively asking them, can you hire me please? Alongside the messages that you sent to Tesla engineers, try contacting Tesla recruiters as well for full-time roles or internship roles or you can also message recruiters from contracting companies for contractor roles at Tesla. Again, just make sure to have a normal conversation with them and kind of just go with the flow. To put things into perspective, you need to be messaging at least five to 10 people a day and eventually some will respond. Obviously, the more you message, the higher probability you have for someone responding. They can either help you improve your resume, let you know what teams at Tesla are hiring, or if you're lucky, get you an interview. Now, when you message someone after they've connected with you on LinkedIn, make sure to send them your resume with a portfolio that kind of shows your work and what you're truly capable of. Talk about details like what you did, how you did it, and the results. You can also try sharing your resume or portfolio with the recruiters or engineers at Tesla that have responded to you for feedback. Next, once you get your resume seen and you eventually get a job interview, you need to make sure that you can relate your past experience to the job description for that role. If the job description requires proficient knowledge in CAD, then talk about all the experience you have in the past using CAD software and what you've created with it. As much as you can prepare for your interviews at Tesla, you're likely to face a problem that you can't answer. The way to get over that is to slow down, admit you're not entirely sure how to solve that problem, and just slowly walk them through your thought process. If you get it wrong, that's fine. Just try your best to be methodical when you're talking to these engineers. Also, just realize that this is just a game of practice. If you fill one interview, it's okay. You'll learn from it. You'll try again the next time and you'll hopefully do better. Apparently, Elon Musk once said that you don't need a college degree or even a high school diploma to work at Tesla. But from my experience applying, I found that you actually do. Every engineering job description that I've seen requires you to be enrolled in a university or college program. And every full-time role requires you to have graduated from university or college. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, check out my two other Tesla videos. This one shows you my engineering resume that got me the job. And this one shows you what my experience was like working at Tesla as a mechanical engineer. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.